Game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic in Honolulu. Merry Christmas, everybody! Santa rolling in on a canoe to Waikiki Beach on this Christmas Day. Indiana State, TCU, meet for the title of the Stan Sheriff Center, along with LaFonso Ellis. Roxy Bernstein with you, and a good one, as it is Indiana State against TCU, as the Horn Frogs have won seven straight into this championship matchup, and a key for Indiana State. If they're going to win, Jordan Barnes needs to be in the middle of it. Yes, indeed. Jordan Barnes has been magnificent. Number one in the Missouri Valley Conference in scoring at 22 points a game. He's got beautiful pull-ups in the lane. Can knock down the three. Coming off a 28-point game against UNLV and for TCU, Alex Robinson, a wizard with the rock. Back-to-back 11-assist -back game. Going to have to keep him out of the lane, force him to score the rock. Indiana State, the number one three-point shooting team in America at 45.5%. Now, Fonz, these two teams hooked up in Fort Worth about a week and a half ago, yeah. and it was a struggle for Indiana State. TCU beat them by 20. Yeah, the inability to knock down the three, three of 16 from the three-point line, and they turned the basketball over. 20 turnovers in that game led to 22 TCU points. And TCU shares the ball as well as anybody in the country. They're fourth in the country. They average over 20 assists per game. Mm. And what a tournament that Alex Robinson has had. Oh, he's been sensational. Getting into the gaps, looking, finding guys, some terrific passes. One between a defensive player's legs in the last game. It's simply incredible what he's done in this tournament. TCU with wins over Charlotte and Bucknell to get to this title tilt. While for Indiana State, they have beaten Colorado and UNLV to get to this rematch with TCU. And also for Indiana State, a key bonds is Christian Williams and Cooper Neese. Yeah. That was their Indiana State debut. They just became eligible after the fall semester in that game in Fort Worth. So now they have a little bit of a feeling and a flow about playing with this team. Yeah, Cooper Neese couldn't quite get it going on the offensive end. Only one of seven from the field in that game. But Christian Williams was amazing. Like he hadn't even missed a beat. A double-double in that game. Both of those guys going to have to impact this game with their offense in order to beat a very tough TCU Horn Frog defense. Long athletic TCU. As Greg Lansing, the head coach of Indiana State, in his ninth season, 17th overall at Indiana State. And in his first season, he took the Sycamores to the NCAA tournament. In fact, just the second rookie coach in Indiana State history to do that. The other, Bill Hodges led a Larry Bird led wow. team to the national championship game in 1979. Greg Lansing has done a really nice job. 73 Missouri Valley Conference wins, the most in Indiana State history. Alex Robinson, the kick to Jalen Fisher. Fisher has made three or more threes in seven straight games. Mm. Shot clock winding down for Robinson. And a travel and a turnover against TCU. Indiana State, Jordan Barnes, who averages 21 and a half points per game, will lead this group, along with Tyreek Key, Christian Williams, the transfer from Iowa, Clayton Hughes, and Amandre Rickman is fifth in Sycamore's history of block shots. Out of bounds, it stays with Indiana State. I like what Indiana State is doing right now. They're trying to get that basketball downhill with Williams, who's 6'5 and able to see over the top. But Samuel coming over and blocking that shot. Inside to Rickman. And a travel on Amandre Rickman and a turnover by the Sycamores. Yeah, when you catch the basketball inside that way as a big, your first look has to be to the middle rocks to see if there's a double team. And then you go into your move, make it quick. Too slow there for Rickman. And a five for Jamie Dixon in his third year at his alma mater after a great 13-year run at Pitt. Robinson with Fisher, Desmond Bain, J.D. Miller, and Kevin Samuel who's had a good tournament for TCU. Yeah, incredible what Jamie Dixon has done in this second year. Took him to the NCAA tournament for the first time in 20 years, Rocks. Jalen Fisher, tough off-balance floater in just his 11th 
two-point field goal attempt of the season. Run to the floor, Rickman, and he walks for a second time. Yeah, when Rickman catches that basketball, he's got to go ahead and dunk it right away. Jamie Dixon, who had two different stints as an assistant coach at the University of Hawaii. Both under Riley Wallace in the 90s. So back here in Honolulu, bringing the Horn Frogs. I like what we're seeing from Indiana State defensively. They're letting their guys play one-on-one -on -one straight up because they're concerned about the assist-making ability of this TCU team. Here's Clayton Hughes. Rickman the kick. The pull up from Barnes and the rebound Alex Robinson for TCU. I thought Barnes should have taken that shot right away. And the lob broken up by Amandre Rickman. The TCU reclaims it. Over two and a half minutes in, we're still looking for our first points. I think TCU's got to use Kevin Samuel, 21, get him in some ball screen situations to free the guards. Fisher gets the roll. First points of the game from Jalen Fisher. Trying to ice keep Jalen Fisher on one third, the right side of the floor. Jalen Fisher made the perfect read to get down on lane and able to put that one up and in. Amandre Rickman, a tough fadeaway. And the rebound, Kevin Samuel, here comes TCU. Quick fake one way, go the other way. He's thinking about it way too much when he catches it in the post. And a foul will send Fisher to the line. And we're seeing him be aggressive with driving the ball, which is not usually his game, as Jamie Dixon normally gets a lot of three-point shooting from Fisher, but there's the numbers for Dixon, who's had 14 20 mm. win seasons <laughs> in his now. This is his 16th season as a college head coach. It's been incredible what he's been able to do, and they've been able to do it with defense and toughness, something he's been able to instill in a short time here at TCU. Fisher now eight for nine from the line on the season. Junior from Memphis, 56th career start. Mm -hmm. And to your point, he hasn't been driving it as much this year. I think that's more of a function of the injury that he suffered at the end of the season. 29 of his made 31 field goals have been from three. Indiana State still looking to get on the board is Alante Holston in the grad transfer from North Texas. And Bronson Kessinger in the game as well. Barnes draws the foul on Alex Robinson, and it's the first whistled against the Horn Frogs. Yeah, I like that Indiana State is not settling for the jump shot here. They're really trying to attack the painted area off the bounce. We've seen them make two post entries as well, with Kessinger, number, two, number five in the game for the Sycamores in blue. He's a better post player than is Rickman. And even though Indiana State, Fonz, is number one in the country in three-point shooting, mm -hmm. they don't take a lot of no. three-point shots. I was, I was surprised. Only six to seven made threes per game. Barnes rattles one in. When Barnes has the basketball in pick-and-roll situations, you cannot lose connection with him because he's so quick into his jumper. He's 51% on his threes. Ball screens have been really good here early for TCU. They got to stick with it. Jalen Fisher from deep. And the rebound falls to Christian Williams for Indiana State. Now, what's the challenge about playing a team for the second time in about a week and a half? Well, you tend to take them for granted, especially when you've blown them out. But I like, again, that they're attacking yet again another post touch for Indiana State. And a travel against Bronson Kessinger and a turnover by the Sycamores. One point lead early in the championship game from Honolulu on this Christmas day.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii flies with us. Outrigger Hotels and Resorts, Escape Ordinary, and Dollar General. Save time, save money, every day. Well, we alluded to it about a week and a half ago. They met in Fort Worth, and TCU took it to Indiana State. And a 20-point win for the Horn Frogs. And Indiana State funds, they really struggled shooting the ball in that game, had trouble executing against the TCU Horn Frogs. Uh, yeah, only three of 16 from the three-point line. But the key was they were never able to get any continuity in their offense because they kept turning it over. 20 turnovers in that game led to 22 TCU points. In order to beat TCU today, they can't turn it over, and they've got to be able to knock down around eight threes. And they've already turned it over four times in this one. We haven't even played five minutes yet. As Indiana State off to a slow start offensively. Cooper Nees checks in. The transfer from Butler for Indiana State. Quat Noy in off the bench for Jamie Dixon and TCU. Jalen Fisher. And the rebound, Jordan Barnes for Indiana State. It's funny for Fisher because every shot attempt in this tournament for him so far has been from three, yet he's been going inside and driving here today. Quat Noy from deep. There's Fisher. Robinson off the kick. Alex Robinson gets his own miss. Block. And a foul on Bronson Kessinger of Indiana State. And Roxy, long shots leads to long rebounds, and that's where your guards have to get back below the foul line area to come up with those long rebounds. All of those guys are actually underneath the rim, so they've got to build out, form a cup, and come up with those offensive rebounds. You cannot allow this TCU team to get second chance opportunities in this game. Otherwise, Indiana State has no shot. TCU has won seven straight games. They're only lost this year. They lost a little over a month ago to Lipscomb, who's nine and three. That's the only loss, and TCU is among the others receiving votes in the latest poll. But I, I look at this team, Fonz, and they just scream top 25 team to me. No question about it, especially with this guy, number 12 in white, Quat Noy in the game. Instant offense off the bench. Tend to shoot. And a whistle is Christian Williams fouled on the drive. Three more bowl games for you tomorrow on ESPN. We start at 1.30 Eastern. Boston College at number 25. Boise State in the Sur Pro First Responder Bowl. And at 5.15, Minnesota and Georgia Tech in the Quick Lane Bowl. And at 9, Cal and TCU in the Cheez-It Bowl. All three games live on the ESPN app, so you can watch from anywhere. And I will be watching that Cheez-It Bowl from Waikiki Beach as Jordan Barnes gives Indiana State the lead. What's your interest in that game? And who are you rooting for? I am a Cal alum, <laughs> so you know where my loyalties sit. <laughs> I just want you to be able to say it and own it. Well done, partner. I can wear it. Come on. And an offensive foul on Kevin Samuel. And the redshirt freshman called for his first. Folks, watch number five in blue, Bronson Kessinger, absorbing the first one and giving up his body. That was a really nice defensive play by Kessinger. He's going to feel that one tomorrow morning through the pec muscles, though. Maybe on that flight tonight back home. Indiana State by one after TCU jumped out to a 4 nothing lead. Home Frog scoreless for over three minutes now. It's been a slow start offensively for both teams in this championship game. And TCU scored 90 when these two teams met on December 15th. Yeah, indeed. And uh, a lot of that coming from those turnovers that we talked about. Indiana State's post is going to have to realize that the double team is not coming from the top. It's coming from the opposite side baseline. So the play is to the middle. A quick move to the middle or a turnaround jump shot to the baseline. Quat Noy underneath and the lay-in from J.D. Miller. It's one of the first times that Indiana State has come over to help. And that's exactly what TCU wants you to do because they are excellent in making the extra pass. One Frogs just two for nine from the floor. 
Indiana State has turned it over six times already as Tyree Key chases down the ball in the corner. Jordan Barnes so quick with that pull-up. Well, we talked about the importance of Indiana State to be able to get it in the painted area, either off the pass or off the bounce. That's <laughs> Jordan Barnes. Woo! So quick off the bounce in the painted area. He has all seven for the Sycamores. Nice drop off, Robinson to Miller for the reverse. When you're late on your rotation, compromises the integrity of your defense, allowing TCU to get in the lane, forces help, and drop offs underneath. So with that assist, Alex Robinson ties the tournament record for most assists in a tournament as Kyle Collinsworth from BYU three years ago set the record and now Robinson has tied it. He had 11 assists in each of the first two games for TCU over here. Wow. Shot clock rolling down. Tough three from Barnes. And here comes Robinson for the Horn Frogs. And a foul on Jordan Barnes, his first. Folks, Jordan Barnes leads the MVC in scoring at 22 points a game, and he does it on plays like this. He's so quick off the bounce, able to change direction, change speeds, and able to pull that one up. And TCU, the wizard with the rock, Allen Robinson with another beautiful pass. Eight seven TCU in this championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Aloha and welcome to the 50th state along with LaFonso Ellis, Roxy Bernstein with you, Meli Kaliki Maka, nice. Merry Christmas nice. from the islands. Slow start offensively for both teams. Indiana State, the number one three-point shooting team in America. You mentioned turnovers. Yeah. They haven't really hurt the Sycamores yet. They haven't hurt them yet, but the Sycamores have turned that basketball over six times in this game, creating half of the TCU points. So that's going to be a running theme throughout this game is Indiana State's ability to take care care of the basketball to give them a chance to win it late. And Jordan Barnes has all seven for the Sycamores getting a breather here and there are the turnover numbers. And now settling into a zone Indiana State. That ball's got to get to that foul line area into the paint either off the dribble or off the pass. Can't settle for Jays. Kendrick Davis in the quick dart to the basket. He took a hard fall here in the game on Sunday night in their win against Bucknell and good to see him out there. Yeah, I've never seen a basketball player literally fall on their face first and that's exactly what happened to Kendrick Davis. So glad he's okay. Wearing a bandage above his right eye as a three rattles out from Tyreek Key and it's controlled by TCU. Back door and the layup missed by R.J. Nemhart. What a nice cut, just couldn't finish it. Cooper Neese steps in. Missing from the baseline and Desmond Bain clears for TCU. Quat Noy hits a three. And he's been the consistent guy, Quatnoy, number 12 in white, off the bench, averaging 14 points a game in only 22 minutes. He's been highly efficient off the bench. Seven straight for the Frogs. Go up six. And inside, and a jump ball as Devin Thomas was tied up. The arrow stays with Indiana State. And folks, we talked about against the zone to make sure you get dribble penetration, and that time off a really terrific screen by Kwat Noy, able to get to the rim. And Noy has been terrific off the bench all year long for TCU. Drills a three from the left wing. Sophomore from Australia has made a three in nine straight games, and now the steal. Noy the slam. Timeout, Indiana State. Nine nothing run for TCU. Quatnoy has been absolutely sensational, having a huge impact on this game early.
Well, a 9 nothing run for TCU has opened up an eight-point lead for the Horn Frogs. You, you need impact players to come off the bench and change the tempo of the game, and that's exactly what Kwat Noy does. We saw him knock down a three this time, anticipating in the pan, <laughs> passing lane, gets out and finish it over the top. I've been really impressed with his efficiency. As I said earlier, 14 points off the bench in only 24 minutes. He's been magnificent for the Horn Frogs. Fonz, it seems Indiana State's having a difficult time getting into their offense. What can they do as going inside and one for Bronson Kessinger as soon as I say it? A nice pick and roll to the basket for an and one. Well, remember what we said earlier, the pick and roll has been really good for Indiana State because there's such good flashes. Bronson Koenig doing a terrific job of screening, gets some meat on that screen, which creates confusion and separation. And what a beautiful drop dime underneath and the finish. Foul on Quatnoy, his first. Kessinger for an and one, an amazing story that Kessinger had a compound fracture of his leg mm. in high school his senior year. And he was going in for a dunk and got pushed from behind yeah. and had the horrific injury, but it struck up a unique friendship with former Louisville standout Kevin Ware. Of course, we saw in the Final Four, Kevin Ware unfortunately had the same kind of injury. Yeah, they began to encourage each other to help each other through the rehab process. And so it's nice sometimes when you're going through something to have a buddy who understands exactly what you're going through to be able to encourage you along the way. And that's exactly what Kevin Ware did. And it was Kevin Ware who reached out to Kessinger right after it happened. As Kessinger was in the hospital, he got a text from a number he didn't recognize. Mm. And he didn't necessarily think it was real when he <laughs> right, got it. He right. had to double check. Yeah. And it was great on Kevin Ware's part to reach out to someone who was a high school standout player and trying to help him through what he went through. The floater from Clayton Hughes for Indiana State. Clayton Hughes, the people, the fans back in Indiana State country, <laughs> they call him game on, claim on. They need that kind of production from him to beat this very tough TCU team. Quatnoy from well behind the line. Folks, he's only 36% from three on the year, but 44% from three over the last game. Eight of 18 from the three-point line. He's been hot. Looked like he shot that one from North Shore. <laughs> right. He was so far behind the line. Pretty beach, by the way. Clayton Hughes answers for the Sycamores. He's been the spark plug off the bench all year for Indiana State. Hustle plays, take charges, loose balls, but he's showing some offense here this afternoon. So after slow starts, both teams starting to get it going now. Miller, and he's on the end line and a turnover on TCU. And folks, we've talked about the impact of Kawat Noy off the bench. Look how deep that is. That's two to three feet behind the NBA line. I think he shot that one from the mainland with a lot of confidence. It's like he shot that one over yes. Diamond Head and in. <laughs> Indeed. He's a special, special player. Red shirt at the 16th, 17th year. Double figure score in just 22 minutes throughout. Fourth in the Big 12 with 43% from the three-point line last year. Explosive leaper. He's been terrific. Born in the Sudan, moved to Australia when he was around five, and then came to the U.S. for high school. Tyree Key with a strong finish inside. So from down eight, Indiana State climbs within two. And a foul will put Alex Robinson at the line for the Horn Frogs. Two-point game in this championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Well, Quat Noy having that impact off the bench, which he has been doing for Jamie Dixon this season. Over a point a minute in this game. Eight points off the bench in only seven minutes, and he's done it on both ends of the floor. Eight points, two steals, two of three from downtown for Noy. And part of that international flavor that Jamie Dixon has brought to this TCU program. Yeah, he played over in Australia, so has some deep connections over there, and that's how you establish that pipeline, and he gets some phenomenal talent. 
from across the waters. And size. Look at those international bigs that <laughs> right. the Horn Frogs have on the roster. Yeah, Yoada Locke is actually out with a hand, I believe, fracture there. So he's going to be out for a little while, which compromises their front line. But this Jamie Dixon team is deep with talent, too deep at every spot. One more for Alex Robinson, 65% for the line, as there is Yuat Alak. First point for Robinson. TCU by three. Nice pass and gliding on the reverse. Christian Williams missing, but chases it down in the corner. Andre Rickman inside. Kevin Samuel goes up strong. That's where Alex Robinson is so good. He gives up his dribble and continues to pivot, look, and find. That time, a beautiful bounce pass underneath to Kevin Samuel. So now a new tournament record for most assists in a Diamond Head Classic from Alex Robinson. Andre Rickman in the lane. And he is struggling to get on track in this ball game. And it's out of bounds and it belongs to Indiana State. Folks, watch this number 25, Alex Robinson in white. Picks up his dribble and he keeps his eyes up. And I love how Kevin Samuel moves from one spot to another open area to allow an angle to make that pass, as I said earlier. The Alex, passing lanes that he finds. My gosh, he's a wizard with the rock. 11 assists in back-to-back -back games. Clayton Hughes for Indiana State. I'll tell you what, game on, claim on has been really good off the bench here. Hit a, th a quick three. And that's something that they've needed with some really good point production. He's been terrific this afternoon. He has seven. The lob. And the reverse from Kevin Samuel as Fisher sent it over the top. What it is, Roxy, is there Indiana State's trying to keep them on one third of the floor, and so the screen is not there, and Samuel's just diving and wide open on the weak side of the floor. Another turnover. And now Fisher gives it right back. And it goes to Indiana State. It's not all about college football on Saturday. ESPN2 is a college basketball rivalry doubleheader for you. Number 14, North Carolina and Davidson at the Dean Dome at noon. And then Kentucky and Louisville and their annual tilt coming up at 2. You can always catch both on the ESPN app as well from anywhere. Kentucky's won five of the last six, nine of the last 11 wow. from Louisville going back to 2010. Yeah, and this is a Louisville team that doesn't have the type of talent that they're accustomed to having, but Chris Mack has them playing at a high level of an intensity Night in and night out. Fallon, Caden, Archie. It's Chris Mack gets his first taste of yeah. the Louisville-Kentucky yes. rivalry. <laughs> well, he's experienced a rivalry in the past with Xavier Cincinnati. It's so pretty it's not, heated. It's not unfamiliar territory <laughs> for Coach Mack. Inside, 5.50 now remaining in this opening half of the championship game. Seven straight wins for TCU and this title tilts. And a foul will put Devin Thomas. No, it's a jump ball. The arrow goes the other way to the Horn Frogs. This is twice now that Devin Thomas has caught that ball in the painted area and brought it down below his chest. When you do that, the guard just standing there waiting to tie you up. When he catches it, you got to keep a chest high, sweep through, and go up and score the basketball. Can't continue to put it down in the painted area. TCU is collapsing too quickly. That was my go-to. The big man brought it down. <laughs> I was reaching for it. Nice. Nine turnovers by the Sycamores but they take it back as Devin Thomas reads the play. In the slot by Kevin Samuel. And now a taunting technical has been handed out. And right away, Tony Padilla on the play. 
calls the taunting technical on Samuel, who was jawing after that ferocious block. Yeah, he, he, unfortunately, he has to make the call. It happens all the time, but Samuel made an incredible play there, running the full length of the floor to catch up and block that shot out of bounds. Now, I have to admit, Rox, I probably would have said the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> The rules were a little different, though, when they you were, were playing. They were a little bit different back then, yes. So Jordan Barnes on a technical. And one more shot coming mm -hmm. after the taunt from Samuel with the block shot. And Jordan Barnes in 91 percenter hits both. And it's an Indiana State ball at the point of interruption. Yeah, and there's that ball anyway, so <laughs> it's unfortunate because Kevin Samuel really did make a terrific play. Jamie Dixon frustrated. Three-point lead for TCU. And by the way, that is not a personal with the technical. It is just a technical, now an illegal screen and a turnover. Clayton Hughes called for the offensive foul. Yeah, and that's the tenth turnover on the Sycamores. Yeah, and what? And over the last couple of years, they've tried to. The NCAA officials have been told to protect the guy from their blind side, and Clayton Hughes went too close on the screen there. Got to stay in his field of vision. Jalen Fisher turns the corner. He's been much more aggressive about driving the ball today. That lets us know that he's feeling good about that injury that he had early in the season that forced him to miss two games. TCU's made their last six shots. Cooper Nice. And a foul going for the rebound, and it's on Fisher. And that's the second on Jalen Fisher with 444 left in the half. That's big because Jalen Fisher is a knockdown three-point shooter, shooting 45% from three on the year and has averaged four made threes per game over the last seven games. One and one for Clayton Hughes as Indiana State is in the bonus. Hughes now just two for seven from the line this year. And he's a much better shooter than that. Percentage-wise, he's a better three-point shooter than he is a foul yeah, shooter. It's amazing. We've seen that a lot in this tournament. Kevin Samuel on the offensive glass. Sometimes it just pays to be big. 6'11", long arms inside. Seven-point lead. The Horn Frogs have led by as many as eight. Pull up on the baseline. Barnes comes up empty, and Samuel clears. TCU putting a run together. The alley-oop to J.D. Miller. Quick shots at times or unexpected shots can lead to long rebounds, and TCU had numbers there and able to finish with the alley-oop in transition. Ball screen and roll worked really well for Indiana State. They've got to get back to it to get some easier baskets. Six straight for TCU. They've opened up their largest lead. Cooper Nice can't handle the pass. 11 turnovers now for Indiana State. Alex Robinson drives and will get to the line. A run from TCU, and the Horn Frogs are up nine. Yeah, you cannot allow the TCU Horn Frogs to get out in transition. Even in secondary break, ball screen and roll. Miller with the strong finish over the top. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Continental Tire. For what you do. Well, it's been 40 years. What a great year it was. 1979 for Indiana State. A young Larry Bird wow. leading the Sycamores against Magic Johnson. The most watched game in NCAA basketball history. The championship at the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. And it was 33-0 Indiana State going into the championship game. But Magic Johnson leading the Spartans to the national championship over Indiana State. And Larry Bird 
It's the 40th anniversary. They're the numbers for Larry Legend. Wow. And his coach, Bill Hodges, that was his rookie season as the Indiana State head coach. Wow, what a miracle <laughs> for the Sycamores. I mean, 30 points per game? But that's tough, though. I mean, you think about college basketball, the closest thing that we've had uh, for that in college, I think, would be a Christian Leitner, a 6'10 guy who can stretch the floor, shoot it from the outside, post-game, mid-game. Larry Bird was incredible. And later this season, as Indiana State gives it away again, Bill Hodges will go into the Indiana State Hall of Fame, and they'll have a reunion to honor that team in the 40th anniversary. And Larry Bird will be part of it nice. back in Terre Haute. Awesome. Partner, these turnovers starting to mount up here for Indiana State. 12 turnovers here in this game that have led to eight points for TCU. Tough fall away. Kendrick Davis comes up empty. Christian Williams leads the break. And the foul is on Alex Robinson, his second. Yeah, Christian Williams has been quiet in this game. 0 for 3 from the field. He's got to get going here. Our E-Trade halftime report coming up. Look at the college basketball schedule, the critical games in the next few weeks, mm -hmm. as well as the teams to beat in the Power Five conferences. And if TCU picked to come in fourth in the preseason Big 12 poll in Kansas, look, it's Kansas <laughs> until somebody else proves it's not. Yeah, and unfortunately, <laughs> it's not looking good for most of the Big 12 because Kansas is a very deep pick. Because remember, This and is a, counted a goaltend, the bucket for Desmond Bain. This is a Kansas team playing with you out, Yudoka Azabuke. And they did suffer a tough loss yes. the other night on the road mm -hmm. to Arizona State. Bobby Hurley's team with a huge, much needed win for the Conference of Champions. Yes. Nine nothing run for the Horn Frogs. And the reverse in the baseline by Alante Holston, the first points for the grad transfer from North Texas. What a beautiful read by Christian Williams, number 10 in blue, once he got in the lane. Got to hold TCU to one and done on the offensive end and get out and look for early opportunities in transition. The runner off the window from the redshirt freshman, R.J. Nemhard. Boy, the defensive yes. pressure from TCU. A two from Christian Williams, his first points, the transfer from Iowa. And Roxy, that's, what, that's who we were just talking about. In order for Indiana State to win this game, he's got to get going on the offensive end, creating plays for himself and his teammates. Had a double-double on December 16th, the last time these two teams played. A three on the way and way off from J.D. Miller. Williams moves in and he throws it away. 13th turnover for Indiana State. Fonz, they average 13 and a half turnovers a game. Yeah, unforced errors, unfortunately. And usually when Christian Williams, number 10 in blue, gets into the painted area, he's making great decisions. He should have shot that basketball once he got into the lane. Is that TCU speeding him up? It, it feels that way for sure. The lob and underneath and the land for Lat Mayan who just checked in the redshirt freshman from Australia. Underneath in the roll for Amandre Rickman, the senior, getting his first points. And posting him up inside will help loosen it up on the perimeter because right now TCU is crushing them defensively. Nemhard and a foul going for the rebound will stay at this end says Michael Greenstein and the call goes against Indiana State. Folks watch number one in blue Alante Holston here he's got to make sure he's maintaining seeing the ball and his man loses sight of his man on the backside is able to catch that ball over the top and finish it. It's important defensively that you maintain the line between your man and the ball. In fact, be slightly below that line so you can look forward and see both at the same time. Defensive breakdown there for Indiana State. Lyon hits the front end of the one and one. And his first free throw attempt of the season. One more coming. 
as the first foul on Alante Holston. This Mayen played with the Australian junior national team, and when he came out of Adelaide, Australia, was considered the, the top prospect for the college ranks out of Australia. He was so long, athletic, in some ways like Noy. <laughs> he can shoot it, can play with his back to the basket. Strong move by Christian Williams and desperately needed by Indiana State. Well, we said that two minutes ago. In order for Indiana State to have a chance to win this game, Christian Williams, number 10 in blue, had to create offense for himself and his teammates. He, that time, creating it for himself, drawing the contact opportunity for a three-point play here. Lopmayan called for the foul, his first. And Christian Williams for the and one. He is nine for 10 from the line this season. And he comes up empty in the rebound. J.D. Miller. Really good defensive first half for TCU. Mm -hmm. Nice pass. Kendrick Davis finds Latman. Boy, what a play by Kendrick Davis. Yeah, when you corral the basketball and all of a sudden the dribbler picks it up, everyone has to fan back to shooters. Another missed opportunity there for Indiana State defensively. And TCU's matched their largest lead Saturday on ESPN. The college football playoff semifinals. We kick things off. Number two, Clemson, and number three, Notre Dame in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic at 4 Eastern. Then it's number one, Alabama, and number four, Oklahoma. The Capital One Orange Bowl. Both games are also live on the ESPN app, so you can watch them from anywhere. College football playoff comes up on Saturday. And Tua Tonga Vailoa, the local product, the hometown hero from Honolulu at St. Louis High School, a high school power over here in the islands. Heisman Trophy finalist. Yeah. You look at the lineage of quarterbacks over here, Tonga Vailoa. Marcus Mariota. Yes. <laughs> the Oregon Ducks were fun to watch when he was behind center for sure. The what question is, is Tua going to be 100% healthy? That's what we don't know. He says he'll be ready to yeah. go without limitations. But it helps to know that even if he's not, if he does have limitations, Jalen Hurts, a guy who's been pretty good in an Alabama uniform, has been pretty good over the years himself. Not a bad backup. Ah, uh, no. Here's Williams. Tyree Key, the floater. And that cuts it to a 10 point game. And we've reached halftime in Honolulu. TCU struggling early offensively, but getting out to a 10 point lead, 40 points for the Horn Frogs, but their defense has been a problem for Indiana State. Defense has been absolutely terrific, forcing Indiana State into 13 turnovers here in the first half. Way too many. So a 40 to 30 lead in this championship game for Jamie Dixon and the TCU Horn Frogs coming up next. It'll be the E Trade halftime report. Championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic from Honolulu. That's what's on the line. 20 more minutes. TCU a 10 point lead on Indiana State as we start the second half. Along with LaFonso Ellis, Roxy Bernstein with you. Aloha, Mele Kalikimaka. Nice. The first half, it started slow for both teams offensively. Then they got going. Yeah, TCU was absolutely fantastic on the offensive end. Ten made, 16 made field goals, assisted on 10. Their defense was equally as stout. Coming into this game, Indiana State could not turn that basketball over. 13 turnovers in that game led to 11 TCU points. So they have to take better care of the basketball. And attacking right away Christian Williams, the follow by Imandre Rickman. I love what Imandre Rickman did there. Whenever your man goes to block the shot, you should run right to the front of the rim. And that's exactly what he did to get that offensive rebound put back. TCU led by as many as 12 in the first half. Quat Noy off the bench leading the Horn Frogs with eight. Jordan Barnes for Indiana State leading all scorers with nine. And the guy for Indiana State that has to step up his scoring is Christian Williams, number 10 in blue. And Jordan Barnes claims the Jalen Fisher miss. Barnes to the basket. And the rebound tipped to Alex Robinson. Here comes TCU. 
18 of the 40 points for the Horn Frogs from the bench in the first half. Wow. Off balance and the roll for J.D. Miller. I love what J.D. Miller did there. He caught Jordan Barnes, who's only 5'11", down in the post with him. Took his time, patient, keeping the ball high and over the top. Well done by J.D. Miller. Christian Williams, the dribble pull up. And the rebound, Kevin Samuel. Alex Robinson stepping into the jumper. And that's what he does. You back up off of him. He has the ability to knock down that 15-foot shot. The roll for Christian Williams. And Rox, that's the guy that we spoke of earlier. This has got to be a lot more aggressive. He's got to be really good on the offensive end for Indiana State to win this game. And the follow slam from Kevin Samuel. Kevin Samuel be, continues to be a force around the bucket for TCU at both ends of the floor as Amandre Rickman answers for the Sycamores. I like the balance there, the patience to find the rim, freeze the defense and over the top. Rickman's been quite effective on the year when he's done that. And again, these two teams met about a week and a half ago in Fort Worth, a 90 to 70 win for the Horn Frogs. There is Kevin Samuel and an offensive rebound. Alex Robinson, a three. 42% from three on the year. You've got to get to him and force him to put that basketball on the floor. Largest lead of the game for TCU, but a three from Jordan Barnes. How good has that kid been on the year? You talk about a hot three-point shooter. He's 51% on the year. Can't Fisher, and he missed the open look and an over-the-back call on J.D. Miller of TCU. First foul on Miller. Alex Robinson does a terrific job of kind of dribbling. Actually, no one was even close to him there. <laughs> He's able to get a wide open look and knocks it down. Then Jordan Barnes comes right back and knocks down a huge three. Those are two guys you can't give much room because when they see it, they let it go quickly, and they're awfully efficient from the three-point line. Drop off, and a swat from Kevin Samuel. Kevin Samuel, he didn't get that one, but he changed it. And then Barnes missing the three. Yeah, I think you had to pull that one out once it hits the rim and give him some offense there. That was too quick of a shot for Indiana State. Yeah, now you got to go to Samuel each time. He's got a little guy in there in Bronson. Kessinger. <laughs> Kevin Samuel is doing what you should do as a big. He's owning the painted area. Anytime anything comes in there, you have to deal with him. And the you said it well, Roxy. The ones that he hasn't blocked, he's altered. He's really impacted the game positively on the defensive end for TCU. 6-11 and long arms. Eight points, five boards, two blocks. Kevin Samuels had a strong tournament for TCU. Not too bad for a kid who came out of a homeschool academy. And in the lane, Cooper Neese gets his first points of the ball game. Klotnoy in off the bench, had a good first half for Jamie Dixon. Pretty drive from Jalen Fisher. Yeah, came off that thing going to his left, froze a little hesitation dribble, froze the help, and then the explosion to the rim. That was pretty. Tyree Key and a foul, and a block is called. If that's on Samuel, that's his third, and it is. TCU by 10 in the championship game of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by 
Exxon and Mobile Rewards Plus. Sign up today. UFC is coming in January. Greg Lansing, and you look at the tradition at Indiana State, and we talked about Larry Bird and the 40th anniversary mm -hmm. of his group going to the national championship game, but the, the tradition's even richer than that. Before he was the Wizard of Westwood, mm -hmm. John Wooden was the head coach of what was Indiana State Teachers College, which wow. became Indiana State. <laughs> Interesting. He also goes back to South Bend, Indiana, when he used to be a high school coach and teacher at South Bend Central. Tyree Key at the line. And yes, John Wooden won 75% of his games mm -hmm. in his two years at Indiana State, mm -hmm. but it was his contributions more really off the floor at Indiana State, which are extremely notable and Wooden's boys there in the late 40s he coached there but his contributions and civil rights and the act of serving as a head coach were probably even greater than he was as a head coach with some of the things that he did and that's what it was about for many of those coaches is not only impacting uh, showing by example of how important it is to not only be a member of your basketball community, but being able to m make an impact in the larger community as well. No one did it better than Coach Wooden. And there's a great article in the Indianapolis Tribune Star by Mark Bennett. If you go back and read it about Wooden's boys in his lineage at Indiana State, it's a pretty pass inside and the finish from J.D. Miller. Yeah, Jordan Barnes late coming over to take the roll guy, which allowed J.D. Miller to be able to get an easy lob over the top and finish. Ten-point game again. And the reverse. Bronson Kessinger and Jalen Fisher a little slow to get up. May have slipped on a wet spot there. Sports Center tonight after the Blazers and Jazz from Salt Lake City with Stan and Neil. How's it? Yeah, I like it. You got to throw that in there I over here it. from Honolulu. <laughs> You've been crushing that, by the way, this weekend. They'll have reaction for the Warriors and Lakers from Oakland. Recap all five games in the NBA. Notre Dame's passing attack could give them the edge against Clemson Sports Center after Blazers Jazz on ESPN and the ESPN app. And you want another Missouri Valley tie-in? Got to give me one. With, of course, Indiana State and the Missouri Valley Conference. Uh -huh. Stan Sheriff, who was, this arena is named after here in Honolulu. Before he came here, mm -hmm. was the football coach and athletic director at Northern Iowa. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. See? Nice. It's Look at you digging deep. Look at you digging deep. Out of bounds, it stays with TCU. But Indiana State, Fonz are doing a much better job of taking care of the basketball. They've not turned it over yet in six plus minutes. In the second yeah, half. and they've gotten back to defensively what they did so well early in the game, which is forcing TCU to have to make one on one plays. J.D. Miller has really impacted this game, especially here in the second half. That's now two straight buckets that he scored on the offensive end for TCU. And the strong power move gives him 12 to lead the Horn Frogs. Cooper Nice in and out of the three. Miller clears. Here comes TCU. Yeah, I thought that ball should have gone inside to number five, Bronson Kessinger for Indiana State. Quatnoy and a foul. It's on Clayton Hughes. Second on Hughes. Yeah, Clayton Hughes had a big first half here for Indiana State. Three of three from the field, one of one from the three point line. Been quiet here in the second half. Two shots for Quatnoy. Noy's been in double figures in each of the last seven games and now with nine after eight coming in the first half. Yeah, well, you, you ought to lock out. It's, he normally actually plays behind J.D. Miller, but with a lockout, now they get a chance to play together and talk about an inside-outside combo. Those two guys are hard to guard. So now in double figures in eight straight. He didn't play the first three games yeah. of the year for TCU because of a knee injury. 12-point game. 
Bronson Kessinger draws the foul on Robinson. That's his third. Yeah, I, I like Indiana State did there. Saw that Kessinger had a mismatch on the inside with his smaller guard and able to recognize it right away and get it to him. I thought they missed him the second time. Two possessions to go down the floor. I think they've got to feed him inside. And if he can score inside, it'll open up the perimeter game for Indiana State. Kessinger only a 39% foul shooter. It's amazing. So Robinson gets a break with three fouls. Kessinger double figures in two of the last three games coming in, but he missed both. Another rebound for J.D. Miller. He's backing off the line when he shoots those free throws. You got to stay on the line, follow it completely through. Quatnoy in a block. Third on Kessinger. And Quatnoy will head back to the stripe. And his ability to be able to shoot the three, 36% from three on the year, puts such pressure on the defense. You go flying at him, he has escape ability as well, as you saw there. Six, seven, 205 pounds, nimble. One more for Noy. It's TCU all-time 0-2 on Christmas Day. Haven't played on Christmas Day since they lost to Syracuse in 1997. And also losing to Wichita State in 1931. Wow. So just the third game yeah. on Christmas Day for the Horn Frogs. And Indiana, Noy gives TCU their largest lead. Indiana State here going with a smaller lineup with this group on the floor. They should be able to drive the basketball. Cooper Nice gets the roll. There you go. Indeed. Kendrick Davis. Quick dart to the basket by Davis. His ability to change speeds, change direction. <laughs> it's really top flight. He's going to be good. When he gets an opportunity mm -hmm. to play more minutes, he's just stuck behind Alex Robinson right now. Yes. Got to drive it with this small group. Out of bounds. We're going the other way. It belongs to TCU. And conversely, because a smarter line, smaller lineup is on the floor, excuse me, for Indiana State, that basketball should go inside. There's no one on the floor right now that can guard J.D. Miller, number 15 in white. It doesn't look like anybody can guard Kendrick Davis either. Yeah, not much resistance on that ball screen. You either got to trap him or get out with the hard hedge. Neither happened there. Largest lead for the Horn Frogs on a 10-2 run. TCU in the championship game has opened up a 16-point cushion. Uh, watch the screen at the top here. Uh, Kendrick Davis, no resistance, able to kiss it over the top. Bandage it all. Get connected with the thousands of sporting events happening by joining ESPN Plus, live games including the National Hockey League, MLB, PGA, MLS, much, much more. You get 2,500 plus college basketball games. Visit ESPN.com to learn more, download the ESPN app, or visit ESPN Plus. Dot com. He's checking out ESPN Plus right now. No doubt about it. What do you think he's watching? Maybe the Laker game? Laker Golden State? That game is probably over by now. Yeah. The way the Lakers are running away with it. Yeah. LeBron got hurt. Yeah, 114 to 94 right now by Ooh. my count. Not good for my Warriors. Mm. Championship game in TCU pulling away. They're up 16 as Cooper Nice has it stripped. 10 2 run for the Horn Frogs. And a foul as Cooper Nice may have caught a shot there from an attacking Kendrick Davis, who's been a problem for Indiana State. TCU trying to win their eighth in a row. Playing for the championship in the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. TCU is pulling away from Indiana State. And we look into next year's field in a strong field again. Of course, the University of Hawaii, the host, and Iran Ganat's Rainbow Warriors. But the field includes Washington, Houston, Georgia Tech, 
strong field coming in 2019. Terry Porter mm -hmm. bringing his Portland Pilots yeah. over. You played against Terry. I did play against Terry. That was those great days of the Blazers as Kendra Davis gets to the rack yet again. Leon Rice in Boise State. Yeah. So a strong field. UTEP coming over. Quaddy Green should be eligible for Washington coming in next year. So we look to the 2019 field here from yeah. Honolulu. I would suggest that many people work on their offense against the zone. Yes, <laughs> Mike Hopkins from yes. taking that zone from Jim Beheim yes. at Syracuse. And it's fitting that Washington on Christmas will bring over yeah. Jalen Noel. Yeah. Oh, nice. Like look at you. Yeah. Nice connection. I like it. All right. So we've got Mele Kalikimaka down, which I taught you. We do? You got me? Yeah, actually. Now i got to teach you to say Happy New Year. What's that one? Haole Makahikiho. Haole Makahikiho? Close. You got it. You're there. Caden Archie will head to the line to foul against Indiana State. Should Caden Archie score here, all ten guys for TCU that have played in this game will have scored. And TCU, which closed out the first half on a strong run, mm -hmm. building on it here in the second half. Their defense has been terrific. Yes. One of the things in talking to the coaching staff before the game, they wanted to keep this Indiana State team below 10 May threes, and they've done that. Three for 10 from the three-point line for the Sycamores. Plus, TCU shooting 59% from the field mm -hmm. in the, in the ballgame. Seven nothing run, 13 2 run, and it's a 19 point cushion. This was a 20 point game about a week and a half ago in Fort Worth. Tyree Key gets his own miss and a putback. Yeah, plenty of time left in this game for Indiana State to get back in, but they've got to keep this TCU team to one and done. Make them take contested shots and defensive rebound the basketball and get out in transition looking for early opportunities for themselves. Second foul on Alante Holston. But Roger, that's it to you earlier. Indiana State has no, there's no way they'll win this game without Christian Williams, number 10 and blue, becoming a factor on the offensive end. And he's been held in check. Yes. And now a zone from Indiana State. The 1-3-1 one, one zone. Jalen Fisher makes him pay for it. Believe it or not, that's his first three. As he's been doing his damage inside today. Four made threes per game over the last seven games. Three Horn Frogs and double figures is key. Missing the leaner. Caden Archie pulls up for a transition three. And Quatnoy goes over the back of Holston. Third on Noy. Yeah, against a 1-3-1 one, one zone, you want to be able to spread that thing, get touch it to the corner, and once you do it, both guys run to the corner from the wings, and you leave one of the more lethal three-point shooting guys open for TCU, and Jalen Fisher gladly knocks down a wing three. Does Indiana State have a run in them? They do if this guy with the basketball, Christian Williams, gets going on the offensive end. And they call Fisher for reaching his third. Could you look at this Indiana State team? Number two in blue, Jordan Barnes. You know he can get buckets. But Christian Williams, number 10, has to get going. And Tyree Key, number 11. The only thing is, Fonz, can Indiana State get looks? Because every shot just about is contested. Too much dribbling. Isolation plays. They've got to get that ball moving from side to side and get deep dribble penetration. The steal, Caden Archie. He's home free. All 10 guys who played in the game now for TCU have scored. Tyree Key turns the corner, draws contact. Second on JD Miller, and Key with a hard foul went in awkwardly. Yeah, TCU's defense has been suffocating 
Jordan Barnes goes down in the gap here at the foul line. Caden Archie doing exactly what he should do, squeezing in tight, able to get a hand on that basketball, and he's off to the races. TCU's defense here in the second half has been not good. It has been absolutely spectacular here in the second half. Tyree Key, a 76% foul shooter, the sophomore from Salina, Tennessee. Last year, Missouri Valley Conference all-freshman team. Former Tennessee Mr. Basketball. He struggled at TCU in that ball game a week ago Sunday, and he struggled a bit in this one as well. Yeah, one for six from the field in that game, 0 for 1 behind the arc for a guy who shoots 63% from the three-point line, averaging 17 a game. Indiana State has no shot in this game if he can't get going. Kendrick Davis missing the three, and the rebound tip to Holston, and that's the fourth foul on Quat Noy, and that puts Indiana State into the bonus. Roxy, now that Indiana State is in the bonus, every time they have that basketball on the offensive end, ball reversal, drive it, try to get to the hole. Alante Holston a one and one. And the grad transfer for Indiana State, the second grad transfer for the Sycamores. Kedar Davis recently was the other. Saturday, it's not all about college football. We got a great college basketball doubleheader for you. Rivalry double dip. The Tar Heels in Chapel Hill take on Davidson at noon. Then it's number 16, Kentucky and Louisville. And also catch both games on the ESPN app as well from anywhere. Yeah, another Jamie Dixon connection. Cam Johnson, who transferred from Pitt to North Carolina, has been terrific, leading the Tar Heels in scoring. 100% healthy, and he's looked like it all season long. He's been super impactful for the Tar Heels. Davidson was in the 2017 Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic as Bob McKillop brought Davidson over here. Williams leads the break. Key spots up for three. And a timeout for Greg Lansing as there was a clean look in transition and much needed three for the Sycamores. Well, we talked about when they could get turnovers or misses, get out in transition, look to knock down threes. Tyreek Key getting going here in the second half. to go up 17 TCU and it's their defense and Fonz you talked about it from the outset turnovers were going to be the key and that's been the problem for Indiana State their ball security just has not been there well their defense has been stout TCU getting out in passing lanes which has allowed them to get out in transition and then they were able to squeeze Jordan Barnes on the interior at <laughs> that time Caden Archie out and dunks one as well 16 turnovers by Indiana State has led to 16 points off those turnovers for TCU. And talking to Coach Greg Lansing, head coach of the Indiana State Sycamores, he said they could not turn that basketball over if they wanted to have a chance to beat TCU. And they have given a lot of presence up here freely on Christmas Day. Corner. Three-pointer short from J.D. Miller. Roxy, I'll say this, though. Because of the three-point shooting ability of Indiana State, with just under eight minutes to go, they're never out of the game. Cooper needs the miss. Miller clears. And here is Fisher across midcourt for the Horn Frogs. And trying for a happy return to the islands for Jamie Dixon. Mm -hmm. Two different stints as an assistant here at the University of Hawaii under... Riley Wallace. And also Jamie Dixon, his wife is from Hawaii. Yeah, so I learned that recently. A lot of connections. Yes. He comes back every year to the islands. Williams too much with the runner. Nice crossover. Desmond Bain, though, leaves it short. So this is where Indiana State has to score. They've got to be able to get out and get some easier looks at the basket before that stout TCU defense can get set. The advance is too slow. Bronson Kessinger inside. Kessinger had a career-high 14 
in that loss yeah. at TCU. Yes. If Indiana State can get this thing under under 10 before the four minute mark, Nod starts to put some game pressure on TCU. They've got to get stops and can't allow second chance opportunities. Seven straight for the Sycamores. Trying to fight their way back in. Jalen Fisher missing. Tyree Key pushes. Out of bounds, last touch by TCU. So Jamie Dixon, two different stints here in Honolulu as he's returning back to Oahu. There he is, a young assistant back in the early 90s and coming back in the late 90s. Look at that hair. I'm digging the more natural hair on the upper right there. I like that. Nice rocking the slick back look. I like it, I like it the other way. He played at TCU, so back at his alma mater. Yes. Great 13-year run at Pitt. Taken over for Ben Howland. And Bronson Kessinger. 71-58. Nine straight for the Sycamores. The goal again is to get it under nine before the four-minute time four-minute timeout. Kevin Samuel can't handle the pass. The momentum over on Greg Lansing's yep. side of the floor now. As a player, when you're up big, you have a tendency to relax. And that allows the opposing team, if they can knock down some shots, all of a sudden you start to feel that tension inside. And that's exactly what we've seen here the last two possessions from TCU. Inside to Christian Williams. 11 straight for Indiana State. Timeout TCU as the Sycamores are making a game out of this now. I love what Indiana State is doing right now. They're going old school NBA basketball, looking to find the mismatches out on the floor. <laughs> Christian Williams, 6'5", just uses Alex Robinson on the inside, and that has given the Sycamore some much-needed momentum here shifting. Remember, Roxy, we already said if you can, the goal is to get it under 10 with four minutes because it puts the game pressure on TCU. So far, TCU not handling the game pressure as Indiana State has made their run. They built the lead to 22, but Indiana State has cut TCU's lead in half. And this is where Alex Robinson, number 25 in white, typically takes over the game with his passing ability, getting in the lane. Roxy, when he gets in the lane, Indiana State's got to play him one-on-one. -on -one. Don't help. Force him to be a scorer. Nice job by Barnes. Offensive foul, a charge, and Jalen Fisher just picked up his fourth. And that's exactly what Clayton Hughes is. He's the spark plug on this team. Hustle plays, loose balls, in this case, taking a charge. Number 13, giving up his body. Game on, claim on. So now a chance to get it under mm -hmm. 10. As Fisher will sit with the four fouls, Kendrick Davis comes back. And what you didn't see, Roxy, there was Jordan Barnes, number two in blue, doing a great job of not allowing Alex Robinson, number 25 in white, to get the ball back once he gave it up. Inside. Posting at Williams yeah, again. Post game has been really good. And coming over, Samuel blocks the shot. Great read by Kevin Samuel. Mm -hmm. Samuel's got a mismatch down there inside. I think he can get a touch here also. J.D. Miller missing a three. And a loose ball out of bounds off of Indiana State. Stays with TCU. Yeah, Indiana State will give him that shot all day long. The most important part for Indiana State is they've got to box out and come up with that possession to give them a chance on the offensive end. Over, over. 
with this lineup in JD Miller's got to go to the box number 15 in white here's Robinson there's Miller underneath picking up the air ball throws up a wild reverse layup and a loose ball knocked around Miller gets it travel. back to travel 11 point game the championship in Honolulu Indiana State making a push here against TCU has been in control of this for most of the ball game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Hawaii flies with us. And Outrigger Hotels and Resorts. Escape ordinary. Championship game in Honolulu, TCU by 11, Indiana State making a late push to get back in it and win the crown here in the 10th annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic as we've had some great championship games here over the years, some terrific teams. USC winning the championship last year with Jamezi Metu and mm -hmm. Benny Boatwright, mm -hmm. Andy Enfield's team winning the title. It's been some great basketball here over the years. Buddy Heald in Oklahoma. Wow. Greg Marshall winning it with Wichita mm -hmm. State. The best game in the history of this tournament, the championship game back in 2012, when Arizona at the buzzer outlasted San Diego State, winning it by one. Nick Johnson blocked a shot at the rim to seal it for Sean Miller's wow. wild points. And in that 2012 field, Indiana State had a dramatic win to take third place over Miami with Jake Odom hitting a game-winning jumper as Kendrick Davis has really played well here in this championship. The lob to Tyree Key and an answer from Indiana State. Yeah, that's a big answer right there because the one thing that Indiana State has done over the last eight minutes of this game is taking good care of the basketball, but number five there, Kendrick Davis shooting the gap and able to come up with that steal. I really like his game. I Hunts. do too. I really do too. Plays within himself, always under control, and that's huge for a freshman. And the freshman has got that quick burst. Here he is in the corner with five on the timer. Speed on speed right here. And the rebound, Jordan Barnes, outlet ahead to Christian Williams. Lays it in. Single digits now. Here we go. Now can TCU handle the pressure? Can they get the basketball to Alex Robinson, number 25, and allow him to go to work? Watch this. When he gives up the basketball, Indiana State's doing a great job of denying him from getting it back. So that's going to have to force Kendrick Davis to be able to make plays. 15-2 run for Indiana State to cut it to nine. Robinson down the lane, and one! Alex Robinson with a heady play. What a great read by Alex Robinson. He read that number 10, Christian Williams, and blue, jumped the passing lane, cheating the passing lane, and whenever you see that, you should go back door. And what a nice pass by big man J.D. Miller. And the strong finish, opportunity for a three-point play here for Robinson. Fourth foul on Bronson Kessinger. Robinson missing the free throw. Barnes to the basket, draws the foul. Kevin Samuel just picked up his fourth. Including that technical in the first half with 2.12 to go. Smart play by Barnes there. We talked about it earlier with TCU having been in the bonus early. Every time Indiana State gets it, they should look to attack. That was a really smart play there. Heady play by Jordan Barnes, number two in blue. Two for two from the line, 91% from the strike for Barnes. First one is pure. One more for Barnes, been a double figures in every game this year. Last year's second team all valid. Mm -hmm. Gets it to nine again. Got to make Alex Robinson a score when he has the basketball in his hands. Defense! 
They did, and it worked against him because Robinson made him pay. What a sweet change of speed, change of direction to get to the rim there. And that went short from Clayton Hughes. TCU controls. And Indiana State has got to start fouling, but a steal, but after the foul. And that'll put Robinson to the line. And it's on Tyreek Key. First foul and key, and a one and one for Alex Robinson, who's two for five at the line. Yeah, 65% free throw shooter on the year. 11 points. Eight rebounds, four assists for Robinson. <laughs> Complete game for number 25 in white. Second in the country in assists. 11 assists in each of his last two games. That's incredible. So, and there's a big deal coming over here for him. One of his closest friends and player he grew up playing with is Brock Steptoe, mm -hmm. the point guard for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Play with him back in the Dallas area. In fact, Brock's dad coached them at one point. They were starting backcourt, although Jordan Barnes the miss. Darla Robinson. Alex's mom coached him for a while as well. She was a terrific player at TCU. And a foul with 1.10 to go. Second foul on Cooper Nice, and there is mom. There's Darla. Where's his mom's number from when she was a big time baller? One more for Desmond Bain. Has been quiet in this championship game, but it's been a, another team effort, balanced yeah. attack for Jamie Dixon. Yeah, all 10 guys who played in this game have scored at least a basket. And TCU withstood a late run from Indiana State. Mm -hmm. From 22 down, the Sycamores cut it to nine, but could get no closer. And then Jordan Barnes, out of control, throws up a wild shot that goes out of bounds. And when Indiana State had it under 10, what ended up coming back to haunt them? A turnover, which led to a transition basket by Kendrick Davis. 18 turnovers for Indiana State. And 13 of those came in the first half. Yeah. And they grab Robinson. It's the second foul on Tyreek Key. And Alex Robinson back to the line. So TCU will win their eighth in a row, go to 11 and one. They're going to stay over here for a few days. They're not going back right away. The Horn Frogs are actually going to play another game over here in Hawaii. Are they playing Hilo? They're going to play Hawaii Pacific. Oh, that's right. That's right. So one more game for Jamie Dixon in a homecoming for him. Nice. An extended stay here <laughs> in Honolulu. That's great. Robinson at both. Sports Center coming up after the ball game with Bucci and Linda Cohn. And a travel call against Indiana State. We're going to try to go for a steal here on the inbounds. And once it's caught, see if you can tie it up. Actually, the possession arrow going towards TCU. So you got to get a quick foul here if you can't come up with the steal. Sophomore from San Diego, Owen Asheris comes in. Walk on for TCU. Now, Diavion Washington, a freshman from Terre Haute comes in for Indiana State. But you'll love this as Asheris' brother, Ian, soccer player, Notre Dame. What? Yeah. You gotta look after him when you get home. Uh, no, I got you. I'm in the phone book. They probably don't know what that is, huh? <laughs> 83 66 TCU. So they'll play Hawaii Pacific and then head back to the mainland and open up Big 12 play. For Indiana State, they'll get after it in the Valley on Wednesday, January 2nd. With Loyola of Chicago, the team that, of course, went to the Final Four last year as Clayton Hughes sticks a three. That's where they'll start Missouri Valley play on the road in Chicago against Loyola.
They had a tough time against this TCU team, but this Indiana State is a team to be reckoned with in the Missouri Valley Conference, especially now that they've added Christian Williams, number 10, and Cooper Neese. If they're picked to be sixth in the league, Come on now. the Valley's a good league. <laughs> Indeed. But congratulations to Jamie Dixon and the TCU Horn Frogs, the champions of the 10th annual Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Hit Classic. Yeah, TCU's defense was stout when it needed to be offensively. Ten guys who have played all ten guys scored. Balance scoring for TCU. Eight straight wins. The Horn Frogs now 11 and 1. My partner LaFonso Ellis, our entire crew, Mele Kalikimaka from Honolulu. Mahalo for joining us.